what's the biggest thing that you learned when it comes to anti-aging or slowing down aging or even reversing aging? What was the biggest takeaway? Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome everyone to another episode of Empowering You Organically, joined by my co-host Terry Intervenin. Hey everyone. And also we have a very special guest today, Mr. Brian Baisley. Brian's a, a good friend of mine and he just had, he has an amazing story. So I'll let Terry Ann kind of go through his bio real quick. Yes, Mr. Brian Baisley, we're so excited to have you here today. Uh, he is a popular and outspoken advocate, author, and researcher who opposes the widespread perception that getting older is, is, is a disease that should be shunned and who instead supports the truth that your 40s, 50s, and 60s and beyond can and should be the best years of your life. Brian is the founder and host at theartofantiaging.com, where he's already amassed a following of over 50,000 supporters for his mission, and where in his own words, they're changing the very definition of anti-aging to mean you're against all the lies commonly associated with getting older, such as that hitting your 40s and beyond means you're doomed to become increasingly undesirable, incapable, invisible, and past your best years. Instead, so many people have embraced the art of anti-aging.com because Brian shares a very positive message in terms of your physical, mental, and emotional health and well-being. Your middle years and beyond truly are meant to be your best years. They provide a range of research and solutions along with a healthy dose of inspiration to help ensure you start living your best years now. Welcome, Brian. Well, guys, thank you so much for having me on. I even trimmed the beard for the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so you created a whole summit on the antiaging.com. You interviewed a lot, of a lot of different experts that came on, and I know you shared all of that information just with the world for free. I think it's phenomenal what you did. What, what's the biggest thing that you learned? when it comes to anti-aging or slowing down aging or even reversing aging? What was the biggest takeaway? That's a great question, John. So, you know, I went into it already um, having a mission, if you will, and the idea and the, that anti-aging and getting older um, was widely perceived as a unfortunately, as a disease, as something to shun. And, and I noticed a lot of people, especially women, um, including women very close to me in my own life, um, who are very powerful women, feeling um, challenged by that notion, um, really challenged by this notion uh, out there that getting older is a disease. So after, uh, during and after the summit, um, it only hit home to me more and more and more as I interviewed this you know, wide range of, uh, of doctors and other experts in longevity and, and healthy aging that it is indeed anything but a disease. Um, that is just a mindset that's put in motion out there by all kinds of powers that be. But the reality is in the name of the summit that your best years really can and do start now. Um, I, I saw people, um, you know, they're really coming into their own when they're hitting their 40s, 50s, 60s and beyond. And, you know, in ancient cultures, they used to, uh, far more so than we do today, um, elevate and praise and look up to people. Now, that's not to say every single person in that age brackets, you know, a wise soul. I mean, <laughs> not necessarily true. But by and large, your, your wisest souls are going to be 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and beyond. Um, because these people, by and large, understand life a whole lot more than, than those of us, uh, well, I guess I'm right on that cusp, but those of those who are uh, younger than that period. So in every facet of the word, including from a health perspective, 40s, 50s, 60s, even 70s should be people's best years of their life. And that was really driven home to me um, in these powerful interviews I, I did with these wonderful experts I had. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think we've lost a lot of that in our culture, especially here in the U.S., right, of respecting our elders, looking up to our elders, even having that relationship with our elders. And, and for me to kind of pivot a little bit, I mean, the whole conversation of longevity, anti-aging, I just turned 40 last year. So I'm, I'm right there at that point to where I'm looking at things. How do I stay looking younger? I'm starting to get a lot more wrinkles. I'm starting to feel my body um, ache and pain and creak and all kinds of other stuff that it didn't used to do. So what was, I mean, what was the, the overall theme? I mean, was the overall theme 
diet changes that, that could help slow down aging was the overall theme. Sleeping more. I mean, what 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 advice would you give not only to myself but others who are just looking to stay feeling younger? Sure. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. I've got maybe about 10 years on you. Um, I'm just, you know, going to be turning 50 uh, in the not too distant future. And I feel better than I ever have in my whole life um, because of uh, the answers, you know, that I'll, I'll give you the changes that I implemented. Um, you know, it's really tough to say what one thing. Um, if, if someone, you know, had that gun to my head right now, I would have to say if there was just this one single change you need to make in your life, you know, the one single word is yes, in your diet. Um, you know, it certainly, uh, but, but I often answer that question in, in this, what you put inside your being is everything, what you allow inside your being. And I'm very specific and not saying, you know, just inside your mouth. Um, and if I was going to advocate to you, John, to you, Terry, and to anybody, um, here's my one single piece of advice is be, become acutely aware of what you are allowing inside your being, meaning what are you putting in your mouth, but also what are you allowing inside your head? Um, it's whatever you feed yourself is what you're going to become. So, of course, if you're feeding yourself, you know, foods that are high sugar and foods that are um, processed flour or loaded with toxins or supplements that are loaded with toxins, it's not, it surprises a lot of people, but it really shouldn't. That's what they're going to become. That's, you know, they're going to go down that path. And so it is with the insights, the information that you allow inside your being. If you are exposing yourself to, um, you know, the, uh, what do they say in the media, lead with the blood, with all of the, um, you know, terrible things that are going on in the world and you're watching the nightly news every night in your region and this is what you spend your time doing or you're listening to a lot of the uh, pharmaceutical drug commercials in between. I mean, any type of information in your head, you're feeding yourself, you are allowing that inside your being and it's the same result as eating high sugar foods on a constant basis. That's what you're gonna become. You're gonna become paranoid, down, depressed, anxious. Um, and so that is the one single thing I would stress most is become extremely aware of what you're allowing inside your being. Yeah, and I think too, and also when you were talking about that, it makes me think about the people who are around you that you allow to influence what's going on inside of you as well, because you know we are what we put into our body. And I love that you said that, like what we're doing is what we become what we eat, what we're letting in. And I think that comes to with aging and wisdom, who are you letting be in your circle? Because you're hearing them, you're interacting with them, you're spending time with them and that feeds into it as well. And so I think you have to be, I love that you said that, be acutely aware of what you're becoming from what you're putting into your body, what you're internalizing, but also the thoughts in my head went to, that really is a huge factor in it as well as who are you surrounding yourself with? Absolutely. That influences yourself as well and what you're, what you're doing with your body, with your mind, with your emotions. Yeah, I, I love the insight of what are you putting into your body yeah. and not just eating because there's, and I talk about this in, in other podcasts and other videos. I mean, we have these 24 hour news networks that sensationalize everything and it's doom and gloom and they blow everything out of proportion just to get a reaction. It's like, if that's what you're filling your head with and your body with and those kinds of emotions, it's gonna be toxic, right? That is toxic, the, the 24 hour news channels. Um, eating the toxic foods, being around toxic people. Um, and you talk about, I know you've talked about in your summit, hidden toxins, like what other toxins are there that, that people may not be as aware of? So we know, let's kind of stay away some, from some of the food toxins, let's stay away from some of the people toxins, let's stay away from some of the media toxins. What are some other toxins that, that people should eliminate from their life? Right. And it is. It's really a process of becoming aware and then deciding what you eliminate and what you add in. And so in terms of elimination, um, well, first of all, I want to stress to everybody this as well. Another thing, you know, that, um, that I knew and that I only, you know, knew even more um, after interviewing so many wonderful people, um, you can't do it all. Um, and I don't ever want anyone to feel overwhelmed that there are all these toxins that they're allowing in and man, I got to cut it all out now. It's not like that. You know, that's, that's bound to fail. It's deciding for yourself what 
are the most important toxins first to start eliminating, and it's a journey. So to answer your question, John, um, some of the most prevalent ones that a lot of people don't pay attention to are inside of A, products that they're slathering on their skin, and also products that are surrounding them in their home and office. Um, you know, we do think a lot, you, you know, Organics has done a fantastic job of offering really pure supplements um, to the world, which I absolutely love. It's one of my, I mean, they're highly effective, but I love that fact that they are so pure and that's important. And it's the same thing with um, skincare products. Become acutely aware. It's just important at least to know um, that doesn't mean you can eliminate everything on your shelves tomorrow. That's impractical for most people, but become acutely aware of those ingredients, um, you know, that are the most, uh, you know, the worst of the worst, and then they're pretty bad and so on. So like phthalates, which is an incredibly hard word to say, even harder word to spell, P-H-T-L-A-T-A-T-S. I might've got it wrong, but anyway, phthalates, Avoid those, for example, parabens, avoid those as well in skincare products. You're feeding your skin. Again, this is something you're allowing inside your body, like we talked about, inside your being. When you put stuff on your skin, a lot of people don't necessarily make the connection. Your skin's eating, basically, and that's what it's eating. Um, and around your home, uh, well, you spend at least, or you should at least spend about seven to eight hours a night um, in, in one place every single day, and that's your bedroom, on your bed. If you're going to focus on having anything be pure as possible, you're going to want to pay attention to your pillows and your mattresses and things like that. Um, if you're sitting in an office far too long every day, like I do, like I think you guys do as well, you're going to want to make sure, you know, that, that there's things inside of your uh, office that are not um, extremely destructive, at least. And then, you know, slowly over time, just scale more and more to antitoxin, I guess we'd say. Yeah, I think that's phenomenal. And I, I, and I know that a lot of people, I'm not gonna say I, a lot of people know this, but clearly what, what you're putting on your skin is toxic and it's getting absorbed into your body and it's not, and, and maybe it does help you look a little bit younger on the outside temporarily, but over time, those toxins get absorbed into your body and then you look older after time, over time, because you're just, you're filling your body with more and more toxins. Do you advocate doing detoxes you know, in terms of your body, I, I mean, how, what would you suggest for somebody that maybe has been using um, less than clean uh, makeups and lotions and things like that? Is there, is there a way to kind of detox the body to help start fresh? Well, I mean, beauty, you know, it's, it's an inside out and outside in process. Um, and the wonderful thing, by the way, about the skin is that unlike a lot of other organs of the body, it's incredibly fast to respond to positive changes, um, comparatively speaking, to a lot of other pieces and parts of your body. Um, and so people, again, even, even those in their 70s, uh, even beyond 70s, 80s, will see results when they start um, doing the right things. And yes, detoxing is certainly one of those important things. And that is... Uh, I mean, detox, you can use, you know, you could say that word in many ways, but um, to use your products, uh, you know, for example, it is certainly an effective part of the process. That's not just going to clean out your insides, your, your skin is connected to the rest of your body. So it's going to have a marvelous impact on the way you look as well and the way you feel right now, not to mention preventing disease and all that other good stuff down the line and in the future. Um, and, and so it is from the inside detox and from the outside again um eliminate it's a process of elimination um if you i don't know you know people range anywhere from a single product to several products you know and uh, i've got women in my life you know who are close to me who i don't even know what all these products on the shelf are that that they're using i've become very acquainted with all of them actually um over time here but um you know so i would say just scale down it's a step-by-step -step process to detox um, also means to literally get rid of the toxins right and i would say just watch those labels um, do the research you can go to um, the art of anti-aging.com we, we publish articles on this as well about what are the most toxic i named a couple like parabens uh, which is pretty wide hopefully pretty widely known that you should avoid those in products so yes it's it's elimination and then bringing the good in as well 
Well, and I think it's interesting it, talking about this concept of not only what you're putting in your mouth, but what you're putting on your skin. You know, Jonathan and I were just talking the other day when it, when it comes to organic food and organic choices, we feel like it's more mainstream now because it's more readily available, but people are still so uneducated. They really are in understanding what is organic non-GMO. Well, it's even worse for me, in my opinion, when we talk about what we're putting on our skin. There's not a lot of regulation. There's not a lot of information brought to the public, the general public on what's in your products. And a lot of women are just using these products, not even thinking about what's on the label. Just like we encourage people read what's on the label and it should be easy to read what's on the label in your food products. The same goes for skincare products. And there's just not, I love that you're bringing attention to it because there's not enough attention on it right now. Yeah. People are not educated. You know, even though this organic food movement has grown so big, it's still only scratched the surface. We haven't even scratched the surface on everyday products that are in our bathroom cabinet that we're right. using lotion, makeup, shampoo, conditioner, hairspray, nail polish, nail polish remover, toothpaste. I mean, all these things we're using, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And there are people out there who are providing good products, but you've got to read your labels, do your homework, do your research, understand what you're using. And people don't connect like exactly what you said, just like the things you're putting in your mouth, your skin's absorbing as much as your mouth absorbs when you're eating food if not yeah. more. And no. so be careful of what you're putting on there. And I think it's great that you're bringing awareness to it because we need to scratch the surface on this industry and call for more regulation and people to be more aware so that uh, we can get more natural products into the lineups and people are more exposed to that. Right. Well, I, I, I like to accentuate the positive, um, you know, certainly in all my communications. And I think that's been part of the draw. That said, you can't, you can't run away from the truth of the matter. And the truth um, you hit a you hit a marvelous uh, series of marvelous points there, Terry Ann. Um, and and part a big part of the truth um, I had talked about at the very beginning, I think, is mindset. And the problem the problem is that you've got um, you know it's a, it's a it's a it's a multi 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 billion dollar industry, the cosmetic industry, just like the food industry, just like the drug industry, and clearly they're they're out there to make some max maximum profit. They're beholden to shareholders. That's their main mode of, of, of driver. Okay, so it is. So um, any, I think, sensible person is going to know, okay, that if I think about that a moment, that means they don't necessarily have my best interest in mind. They're, right. they're, not, they're not literally out to hurt me. You know, nobody's sitting there, ha ha, how are we going to get, you know, what they want to do is make a lot of money and they yep. make a lot of money. All right. So how do they do that? Well, they do it. Uh, I'll, I'll pair it way down. They do it in two ways. Number one, they perpetuate this message of guilt, shame, and fear when it comes, for example, to the cosmetic industry, that getting older is a bad thing. And, you know, you need to, instead of looking your absolute best now, you need to look like you're 21 again. No, you don't. No, you don't. You, want, you just want to look your best. And there's a lot you could do for that, but you don't want to look 21. That's, that's nonsense. And it's just perpetuating this, this uh, you know, fear and, and shame about getting older um, so that we can then sell you our stuff. And this stuff is, I'll be frank, I mean, a lot of it's cheaply made. It's cheaply made. That's what a lot of artificial and synthetic chemicals are. They're corners. They're cutting corners. That's what it amounts to. So stuff can sit on a shelf for years. Um, and, you know, there's a million reasons for it. But the point is, it's not good for you. And like John said a short while ago, it may have an immediate, some of it may have an immediate, um, you know, impact on your appearance. Okay. So, you know, maybe it'll lift lines. But not too long thereafter, it can have all kinds of detrimental effects, including on the way you look, which is ironic, right? Not yeah. to mention the way you feel, not to mention how long you live and how well you live. Um, so, I, yeah, I really can't stress it enough. When, as people become, like you said, more and more aware of this, they're going to have to change. The beautiful news is there are um, great companies just like organics in the supplement space. I mean, there are... Uh, it, it's, it's very small. I think it's still hard to find in the cosmetic space, but you know, it's growing. Um, they're probably several steps behind. I think organics has taken a lead in the sub, you know, it's one of the companies that has taken a, a giant lead in the supplement industry. 
Um, I think five, 10 years from now, everyone's going to try to be, you know, playing catch up with you guys in the, in the supplement space. Um, and this is going to happen in the cosmetic space too. So there is change happening. Yeah. Well, uh, and people are waking up to it. I mean, there's a makeup company that one of my really good friends exposed me to, and it was so much smaller a few years ago. I think their name is lemongrass and they have amazing natural products and now they're growing exponentially. Like they yeah. can't even keep up with their order. So people are, waking up to it, but you have to do your homework, know where you're spending your money, know what's in the products, really understand what the labels are. It's so important. So I think people are waking up to it, but it's going to take a big movement to get more people on board with it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating getting into the supplement space, realizing how 98% of the companies out there are cutting corners, putting synthetics, putting garbage out there, toxins out there. And, and I've said it before on, on other podcasts. I mean, we could make some of our products for $3 a bottle if we wanted to use garbage ingredients. Yeah. You know, instead it costs us uh, six times that <laughs> to make some mm -hmm. of it. And so the profits aren't there, the margins aren't there. And, you know, um, it, it, makes, it makes it a lot harder to run a business that way. Um, but the difference yeah. is you get so much higher quality. And so, and I've said this before, I mean, we vote with our dollars. Right. So we may not be able to afford everything organic. We may not be able to afford all of that stuff. But the more that we transition our lives to organic, whether that's makeup, supplements, you know, food, whatever it is, then the more people can create organic and it's going to drive the price down more and more. You made the comments very cheaply made, but then they turn around and spend all this money on it. Not only do you do you speak with what you're, you know, you're spending your money on, but that's your hard earned money. We talk about this all the time, like you're spending your money for bad effects yeah. on the products you're taking. Like people really have to internalize that. It's this cheap product, you're spending all this money to buy it, and then you're gonna end up spending money fixing the problems as a result of what you're putting on and in your body later. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a vicious cycle. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny because um, I've, been, I've been in the natural health wellness industry for 20 years now, and I've seen that argument slowly die, but I understand people, it's, it's hard to spend money and, and people, um, you know, naturally react to that when you can go to a Walmart, for example, and see a supplement that might call itself uh, turmeric on the shelf and spend 10 bucks on that or eight bucks or whatever it might cost. And then they might see, you know, um, a true turmeric with, you know, high quality done right. You know, um, I love organic turmeric. Um, and it's three, four times more money, five times more money. Of course, there's initial reaction. What? You know, I don't, what's wrong? You, you, got, you guys are trying to gouge and blah, blah. And I think that's slowly that um, dying down because people are starting now to understand, yeah. wait a minute, these are the good guys um, because they're actually making this right. Um, and they're doing it in a way that's actually going to help me. It's not designed to, you know, to sell mass units and, and profit this, you know, um, giant organization. I mean, the fact is this, um, I've been around this so long. I've been, I've helped build some, you know, uh, major businesses. I know you, you guys have been this a long time. And if I had, if I was, you know, evil schemer and I wanted to, I could go out there and I could, you know, create a bunch of crap filled with synthetics myself. I could sell it for, you know, $17 or, or, or less than that. Um, put all this glitzy marketing behind it and sell the living heck out of it. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm in this, like you guys are in this because we care. We care about people and we want to be a part of that positive change, which again, loops all the way back to what we started to say, a podcast like this, a newsletter like ours over at the Art of Anti-Aging, any of these things, these, these are the positive, the good guys and gals that people, you know, want to allow inside of their being. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, a lot of people are still getting their messaging from, you know, the influence, let's just say a big pharma and big cosmetology, you know, the cosmetics and all these other industries, but it's changing and it's, it's a good thing. Slowly, but surely. <laughs> it, it, it is. I, it definitely, I mean, it's not on the mainstream, right? And right. so it, it's little uh, organic podcasts like this. It's your summit. It's reaching people directly. Um, and it's the grassroot, grassroots movement that is going to make th this big change here for us. So share with me some other insights. What, what else did you learn from doing the summit? What, what, other, what other things could you tell our listeners that would just be an awesome aha moment for them? 
Yeah, I'm not sure they haven't heard this one before. And right now, all three of us, I think, are sitting down. I know I am. And it's one of the worst things we can do. Um, it's funny because <laughs> in this, in this, uh, in this summit, here's what, uh, and by the way, that, you know, I played that summit to very limited release. Um, and we saw, wow, it had such amazing feedback that I'm, I'm going to, you know, go to a much, much wider volume on, on repeating that summit. Um, if people are interested in that, they can go to theartofantiaging.com, check that out. But um, I asked this question, again, from a range of different experts. What are the three most essential things people should do, must do to look their best, feel their best, and live a long life doing it? And I asked that question, three most essentials, because there is an overload also of information out there, including from experts. And it can be, um, it's, it's, it's enriching, but it can also be overwhelming to people. I'm like, okay, let's, let's hit to the you know, heart of the matter here. Your three most essential things, doctor, you know, doctor, this, doctor, that. What are your most three essential things? And, and I'd say from three quarters of them, even if it wasn't one of their three most essentials that came up, was moving more. Move, move, move. Get up and move around. Exercise. It doesn't necessarily mean to, to you know, hit the gym and, and grunt and, you know, and all that good stuff if that's not your thing, you know. You can get up and move around um, in so many different ways. But we, we all know this kind of in theory, but clearly we're not all practicing in fact, is make every single effort in your life to find more ways to stay off your butt, <laughs> to be frank about it, and, and keep moving around. Um, I love that game in parking lots. And I still see this game all the time when you go to a store or a restaurant or, you know, wherever you're going, how people swarm and try to find those closest spots. And, and people will drive two, three times around trying to hit. And I'm like, okay, this, this, this is a statement about where we are at today when the thing that they all need to be doing is going way out to the edge of the parking lot and parking out there and walking all that way, you know, so Take the stairs instead of the elevator. I see it all the time too. I mean, it's, it's simple things like that, but you get just that much more movement in your day. Yeah. Yep. Powerful. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm standing, by the way. I'm not sitting. And, okay. And I work at a standing desk for that reason. I do have chairs. I sit down every once in a while, but I'm standing on a padded mat, you know, um, because yeah. we know the difference of, uh, of just sitting, being sedentary, and just what that does to our bodies. All right. That's an excellent one. What's another one? Mm hmm so I'm the only lazy sitter here right now, huh? Very I'm sitting yeah. in a tall chair. Oh. <laughs> so you're in good company. But I have a standing desk as well. I don't. I work because we all spend so much time on the computer, and you know, you know that as well. And you're you're used to. That. I have a standing desk as well, and just have to stand all the time. Just feel. I I get that. <laughs> yeah, another one. Wow. I, I mean, I could talk a lot. Again, we talked about we talked about food. Um, let's go back to that because uh, we hear it. Um, we hear it often, and it's another one of those things we know in theory in general, but, you know, I think hearing something repeatedly in all these different ways is so important because we need those constant reminders in our life. Um, I think a big part of, of people's challenge is we all know, we know a lot of the right things to do, but we only know it in a, in a, in, when we're thinking about it in a theoretical sense. And we often, 90 you know, percent of our day is habit. And we're, in, we're kind of in this habit mode where we're just doing and we're not conscious. And that's when we, we lose it. And that's when we do the mindless eating. That's when we reach for the junk. That's when we allow toxic media in our heads and all those sorts of things. Um, so I think hearing podcasts like this and reading newsletters and seeing these emails in your inbox every day um, from the good guys um, is, is so important, even if it's the same thing repeated three, four times in different ways, because that's part of that reminder. It's almost like setting little alarms for yourself. Oh, yeah. Well, one of the other universals, and no surprise here, it's what many of our moms told us, and it's so true, is you've got to eat more vegetables. I mean, you know, you've got to, there is no such thing as too many when it comes uh, to most vegetables, at least, you know, greens, especially. I mean, um, the rainbow uh, as well. And it's one of the few things in life where you can go ahead and, and do it on overload. And if you're taking, you know, supplements, it's the same thing. To make sure it comes from 
these natural sources as well. Again, like organics do. Um, but it's, it's so, so critical to your being to um, feed yourself more of, you know, nature's ultimate food, which is, you know, vegetation. Um, and, you know, there's arguments. I mean, I know there's people who define themselves as keto, and then there's people who are purely plant-based eaters and everything in between. The reality is, if you pound those vegetables and you cut out the sugars and you uh, or cut way down on the uh, artificial uh, sugars as well as the uh, processed foods with sugars and you cut way down on the processed flours, just do those three things, you're going to be friggin' fantastic in terms of the way you feel. Um, I think it's hard to do, which again, I love 7M Plus, for example, because it's really hard to eat that many mushrooms um, done the right way, but they're so amazingly good for you, um, which is why today, part of the reason I think, you know, supplementation is is necessary. I didn't always think that. Um, you know, I, I used to have this argument that, um, ah, you know what, if you eat, if you eat all the right foods, you know, uh, you don't need to supplement. Unfortunately, one of the reasons that's not true, uh, I can go down another path here, is because food itself is not what it used to be. Um, you know, unfortunately, our soils are depleted. Um, our air is challenged. I mean, toxins are everywhere and I don't want to scare people, but it's true. So you can, but you can do a lot to fortify yourself against those toxins. But unfortunately, you know, um, a piece of spinach, you know, most pieces of spinach you go and get from a store today are not the same pieces of spinach that you would have gotten 50, 70, 100 years ago. So unfortunately, you do need some, you know, um, high quality supplementation. But, you know, so again, it's just to, going back to that awareness thing, to pound, this is, this is my very, uh, that's not too much of a clinical term, is it pound, but to pound those vegetables is important. Love it. Yeah, I think people get caught up in the different diets and the keto and the this, that, and the other. But I mean, I've done keto a lot, and you eat a lot of vegetables on keto. Right. If you're doing it right, you know, it's not it's not just eating a bunch of animal products. You can be keto and vegetarian. Um, doing it right, you might eat a whole lot of avocado to get there, but you can get there. Um, but I don't. I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find too many doctors or experts to say vegetables are bad. <laughs> I haven't found one yet. I'm looking. If they say that, you should run the yeah, other way. There's people out there that still think the earth is flat. <laughs> so, you know, there, there's probably some out there that think vegetables are bad. But for the, for the most yeah. part, um, I think that's great. I mean, it, again, it, it goes back to you are what you eat, right? Um, and what are you putting inside of your body? And so are you putting in a bunch of nutrients? Are you putting in a bunch of live food? Are you putting in a bunch of dead food? I mean, what mm -hmm. you a bunch of processed food, a bunch of sugars. I think most people can agree too. The processed and refined sugars are garbage. Um, that most flowers are garbage. Anything quote unquote white um, is bad for you in that sense. All it's right, cauliflower, not cauliflower. Yes, not, yes, <laughs> cauliflower is still good. Number three, what is your third tip? Third takeaway for people. So the first one is move more. The second one, pound the vegetables in your mm -hmm. clinical terms. And what is the third one? Well, really, I mean, it does go back to our first question. I mean, it might even be my, I might nudge it up to first. It's all about awareness. It really is about awareness um, and being kind to yourself in the process of that awareness. And again, what I mean is when you, you know, knowledge is power. I mean, it's cliche and it's true. Um, when you know and you educate yourself on what is truly good for you and what is truly not good for you, uh, you can then, you are then empowered to make choices for yourself. I don't want anybody to think they have to, again, I keep stressing this because I know we all love to you know, be our own worst enemy sometimes. Um, you, you can't and you shouldn't try to make all the changes. But becoming aware, for example, that a, a printer, um, a printer should not be very close to you in the office because you can't see it, but it, it emits these tiny little particles that are really bad for you. So if you, you know, many of us have printers, if you're going to have one in your office, put it far away from you. I mean, that's just a little tip. And what I'm talking about in a bigger sense is 
by by learning that type of stuff, um, you know, by learning what Terry Ann uh, and I were talking about in terms of these chemicals that are inside of skincare products, by learning what you guys teach about what you really want to avoid that is inside of many supplements and what you guys therefore do with your supplements, which is make them, you know, very uh, healthy and, and good for you, by, by knowing, um, by becoming aware that you are in control of your health. And you want to be in control of your own health. Because if you are not, that means someone else is in control of your health. And that someone else is often <laughs> doesn't have your best interests in mind. I mean, uh, because it's usually these, again, these, these larger um, interests out there who have their own interests in mind. So you want to have control of your own health. And you do that first and foremost by becoming aware of the very things that you guys talk about in your podcast that I talk about over at my newsletter. Um, you know, that a lot of the good guys and gals out there are, are talking about now. This is what we you know, we need to expose ourselves to more are those who are telling the truth, frankly. Uh, absolutely. And it's what you're doing, right? It's what you're doing at your site. It's what you're doing on your mission. It's what you're doing on your summits. The art of antiaging.com. Give us a little bit of, uh, share a little bit more about your summit. Share a little bit more about the kind of experts that you have. I know that you um, air it for free several times a year. Um, and just tell people more about it because the knowledge is power thing is absolutely true. And one of the places to get some of the best knowledge when it comes to longevity, when it comes to anti-aging, when it comes to really taking care of yourself is your website and your newsletter. So will you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, well, if you don't mind a plug right now, if you, if you go to the art of anti-aging.com, there's just a free report that um, the 25, uh, things, products in your home. I'm, apparently, I don't exactly have the title in mind, but the 25 products in your home that can cause early aging and disease. And it's free. And it's exactly what you know I was talking about, about things we surround ourselves with. As for the summit, um, yeah, again, I was, I was, uh, I poured, and my team with me poured probably a good solid, close to a solid year um, in, into the planning of that. And I thank you, John, for so many good insights and advice on that as well. And um, it was hard work, um, but I was so excited to, to, to do it, to bring it to people. Um, you know, real quick, my own background. So I've been around this industry, uh, you know, working with a lot of, uh, you know, good folks, top doctors, um, like I said, for a couple decades now, and uh, doing a lot of health research. And uh, it, I could have gone in many directions in my life, but it was because um, of powerful women, you know, were in my life very important to me, my mother, my sister, others as well. Literally, they saved my life. I went in years back, um, you know, through periods of depression. Um, when I was young, my father was alcoholic, very abusive. Um, all kinds of things happened that could have dragged me down and taken me out, so to speak. But there were powerful women were always there for me. Um, and literally, uh, in more than a couple of cases, saved my life. And so it was really um, shocking to me in a way. It, to, to watch as they got older, my sister's uh, in her early 50s, my mom's in her 70s, um, to watch as, as they, even these powerful women were confronted with these feelings of shame, fear, and guilt about getting older that I talked about. So it's like, you know what? Um, I, I'm experiencing them too as a man, you know, uh, but, but I think women have it even far harder actually just to be honest about it because it really knocks them down if you get older you're you're invisible now as a woman and you're undesirable if you're past 40 you know 40s or something like that uh, well my wife is you know 40 you know she's more beautiful than ever to me i mean um so it really, really is something I was like, you know, what? there's only one path to go on. It hit home. This is what's calling to me. I, I have access to all of these amazing doctors and other people. I know them well. I've gotten to know their material well. Dozens and dozens of them. Good people like you, John. Uh, and here's a problem. I've got a solution. I've seen it that these people have real answers that can help these people truly start living the best years of their life now. I said, I have to do this. So I did it. You know, it's one of those things. I know I just made it sound really easy. It wasn't that easy, but but I said I this is this is my mission. I've got to do it. Um, the result again. So interviewing these these twenty one um, you know top doctors and other health ex experts in anti aging and longevity, um, it was an astounding uh, 
success because I heard from thousands and thousands of people who took the time to write or post comments about how life changing it was, you know, and all that good stuff. So, you know, thank you for noting, John, that yeah, I will be um, playing that again, um, opening it up to a much wider audience this uh, July. Um, so you can go to the Art of Anti Aging and, and watch for that. And, uh, you know, it's going to be some extras in there and everything like that, just because it's such important information that has to reach people to be honest about it. When, when, when these experts are telling people their three most essential things, you know, what could be more important? And these are really, really trustworthy people. Uh, Dr. Dean Ornish, uh, you know, is in there, Dr. Furman, uh, just a host of, of, of people, some of which have you know relatively big names like those i just named some you know who don't necessarily have the big names i have a posture expert in there um now he's got a niche but i don't think anybody would you know his name is dr weiniger but and he's a posture expert on on the importance of you know it's funny by the way whenever i say that everyone starts sitting up straighter i you know i just did <laughs> and it's super it's actually so important for your health and well-being your posture and i brought you know brought him in and a lot of people hadn't heard the insights this man had to offer it was really great i mean we have you know folks talking about um uh, you know literally a couple of potential nobel prize winners um who for what they've done in, in showing, not theoretically only, that Alzheimer's can be reversed, but actually doing it through diet, nonetheless, through diet. And, and they're talking and answering these questions. So yeah, I, you could tell I'm excited when it comes up, you know, the, the topic of this summit, because it was it, it far exceeded my own expectations and I had ridiculous expectations. <laughs> so it was great. Awesome. Yeah. Love yeah, that's awesome, Brian. Yeah, and we couldn't support you more. So we love what you're doing over there. Um, Brian and I have been friends for a few years. Brian helped us launch Organics uh, a few years back. And so um, we go way back. And I appreciate you. I appreciate you being on the podcast. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate your mission. Um, I cannot encourage people enough to go to theartofantiaging.com and go sign up for Brian's newsletter, not just to get the free report. Um, but then you'll get notified when he's going to play the summit again uh, in the future, which you're doing again in July. Um, for those that aren't aware of what a summit is, it's like going to a conference, but not having to leave your home. So you do that over seven days and you have a, a few experts every single day, right, Brian, um, for, for a few hours and people can just watch from home and you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to spend any money. Um, and it's a phenomenal way to just get tons of information. Um, around living longer and living healthier. So, would you mind if I hired you, John, for for PR? That was beautiful. It's better yeah, than I, I ever said it. Thing. You plugged organic more <laughs> than I think uh, I've ever plugged it myself. <laughs> um, thanks for coming on, man. I'm going to have you back on again. I really appreciate your time. And any last words? No, Terry powerful Ann? information, and I think it's a beautiful thing you're doing for women. I think aging is such a beautiful concept, and I think we need to change the way people see aging, um, the wisdom that comes with it, and that you can feel better in older ages and, and as you're aging than you did even when you were younger. And that's such a myth for people that you can feel even better now than yeah. you, when you were younger. So I love what you're doing. I think it's a powerful mission. Oh, thank you guys. Well, this was a lot of fun. And um, again, uh, as John noted, he and I go, you know, several years back, Terry Ann and I too. And uh, it's, it's good to have uh, friends like you guys who seriously, I mean, uh, when I put one word behind both of you, honestly, um, as individuals, it's trust. And trust is not an easy thing, you know, to, to come by in this world. Um, so for everybody listening, I would say one thing, you know, that, that, that you can do with these two is trust. Um, and I'm a person who it's been, it's been, you know, because of what I went through earlier in life, it's been a challenge sometimes to learn to trust people. Um, and so not only do I trust, you know, organics products for sure. And I know it's real deal. Um, I recommend, you know, to, to everybody, I mean, to, to people following the art of anti-aging to people that I know, because I know it's good. And there's only a, maybe a, about on a hand, a half of a hand and a half of different um, organizations where, all, where universally I could say that about their products. So I just want to say thank you um, to both of you for putting this company out there in the world where, you know, uh, I think we need more organizations like it, where you know you could turn to that organization. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. And you know you're going to be able to put that, like I talked about at the very start, into your body and trust it. Um, trust that it's going to be good because there's, n there's not enough of that out there 
the good news, as we said, more and more movement in that direction. But thank you both. Thank you so much awesome. for saying that. I appreciate that. Thanks, Brian. Thank everybody who's listening. Uh, you can also go to empoweringyouorganically.com for all of the show notes. If you want to watch the video, download the transcripts, um, links to Brian's website, theartofantiaging.com. Um, make sure you like us, comment, subscribe on iTunes, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Thanks Brian. Have Thank a you, guys. Time. Thank you.